All right. It's either we're gonna work or it's not. I'll hold it like that right there. Let her rip. Yeah. All right. Like Eric said, it's been a long time since we've been in here and then it made a video, but we're back. It's a thirsty Thursday and uh, we actually got some light outside. Thank you, Daylight Savings. And uh, it's not 40 degrees right now, so we're living pretty good. Yeah, 55 degrees, but it's been a long time. We were uh, off for a couple weeks, went to uh, Louisiana, New Orleans for my bachelor party. Hell of a time. I think he would attest to that. <laughs> Uh, but we're back on race car stuff, and uh, basically this whole season so far has been a bust because California has been an El Nino. Uh, we missed two practice races and our first race. All got canceled for rain. Uh, there's a race this weekend at our local track, Antioch. We're not racing because it's not our class on the schedule, but they canceled that already. So it's not looking good. Um, so hopefully you get on the track in April. Fingers crossed. But until then, uh, this thing is gonna sit on idle and we're gonna keep on working on this hobby stock motor. And uh, check this out, they got a new bush light can with the bass on it, special edition. I'm feeling it. Tastes the same as the old stuff. All right. I got all of the uh, piston rings here, filed, fitted, uh, and the end gap is set. So, ready for some spiral locks? It's all you, man. You took them out, you gotta put them back in. All right. You can get on that, and uh, I'm gonna get on. I got the rear main seal for the motor here. So you got three of them. And I bought three of them just because I'm sick and tired of not having them around and having to wait on parts. So they were on sale on Amazon for $8 a piece, so I just bought three of them. And uh, what are the odds it leaks? It's not gonna leak, all right? The Phil Pro, <laughs> we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this crank out, clean it up real good. Um, blow all the oil galleys out and then go ahead and install it for one last time with the rear main seal and then we can work on getting the uh, the pistons in and the short block going hey, it's number three all right HPC Eric says they're easier to take out than they are to put in yeah after I taught you how to do it and if anybody out there has dealt with spiral locks before they know that's the truth these things are a pain in the ass to get back in big time you don't say He's doing that. I got the crank out that we polished in that last video we made. Looks perfect. Um, so I'm gonna blow out all these uh, old galleys here and clean this up real good. And then I don't wanna clean this block anymore after I get this crankshaft in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my last little cleaning on the cylinder walls here, making sure all the gunk is out of it and uh, wiping it down real good. Cause we're ready for assembly time now. No more block prep. Okay. The first thing on the assembly process is to get this plug in there. If you forget this plug that goes down there in that galleyway, you won't have any oil pressure at all. Ask me how I know. But anyways, uh, cleaned out real good. I'm gonna put some red Loctite on there and smack it down there with a eight millimeter deep socket. And that's the first step. I like to put a little RTV Ultra Gray on the remain seal before I install it. All right, got the rear main installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, torque this baby down. Two bolt, two bolt main here. I'm gonna take all these bolts out and go ahead and give them a nice little coating of oil here. Just like that. Get a proper torque reading. One at a time. All right, so the crankshaft is in. Got all the bol bolts torqued here. Moves nice and smooth here. 
Gonna go ahead and check the thrust bearing clearance again, but I had about 4,000, so we should be good. HPC Eric here was putting the rings on the pistons, and I'm not gonna throw them under the bus here, but he thought it'd be a good idea to have Olivia, my fiance, try to put on one of the rings. She was doing good. And uh, as you can see, brand new plasma molly ring snapped in half. But it's not her fault, so don't put any blame on her. Uh, but this was the the second ring. This is not the top ring, and this is a cast iron ring, which very are very, brittle. very, very brittle. So just bent a little bit too much. Just in our hundred dollars and seven days of shipping, and we'll be back on track here to put the pistons back in it. Um, but until then, I guess we can put the galley plugs in and do a couple more things here and there. We'll figure it out. Oh, by the way, Fleming Family Racing, you guys heard of them? It's a YouTube channel, and they decided they wanted to sponsor us. So these stickers are going on the car. Skylar and family, I appreciate what you guys have done. Um, the newest sponsor on the Tracing Racing Team is them. Check them out. The racing team in Florida, and they're building a pure stock, kind of like we're building a hobby stock with this motor right here. All right, we're... Uh, Pretty much three for three here. This Saturday's race at Antioch Speedway just got canceled again because it decided to dump rain on Tuesday, dump rain on Wednesday, and here we are, it's Thursday again, and uh, apparently the whole entire track is still flooded. So uh, we're not putting this thing in the trailer tonight like we wanted to be and getting ready for a race. So we're gonna get back to the old motor here. Um, thank Jesus for Hastings selling single piston ring kits. So I called uh, Summit Racing, I said, hey, I bought one of your Summit Racing Piston Ring Kits. $100, I only broke one. Do you guys have any single kits? They said, nope. But they didn't do the research to find out that their rings are actually made by Hastings and Hastings sells a single kit. So it was the one single piston ring kit that Summit had in stock. Everything else was a custom order, but the size we needed, it came in. It was $35, but it beats paying for a whole new set of rings. So uh, we're gonna get these things file fitted real quick right here and get these last two pistons in there and then keep on going okay so that's cylinder number three right there we just need the top ring on that one so went ahead and uh did the top ring it came in out of the box at twenty one thousandths, and these are hyper detected pistons so they like to uh expand a lot on the top ring because they're really high up on the compression height so we opened that up to about 29, 30 thousandths. And then now this is the uh, ring number two for cylinder number five. This one's gonna be tight. And this one right out of the box was right at 19 thousandths, which we're looking for. So made it pretty easy. Got a brand new bottle. Gentleman Jack right here. Yes, we like our whiskey cold. All right, we picked up a whole bunch of stuff at a, uh, local harbor freight store a little bunch of knickknack stuff we had on the board grease gun zip ties air hose. and a new air hose because the one we have is uh kind of redneckified here we made it work for the time being but it's time for a new one so harbor freight down the street for the win and then a nice pittsburgh pistol grip grease gun it does work much needed yeah We've been working with the little tiny one about this big for a long time now. It sucked. And it works for about, two I don't seconds. know, two seconds and then it stops popping grease. So that's off the board. Um, these uh, piston rings are just put on the pistons, are ready to go in the block. Just gotta get the bearings on here and uh, lube up the piston skirts with some nice motor oil. Ready? Yeah. Good. Good to go. Cylinder three in, five next. Very special. All right, we got three and five both in. Um, as you guys can see, I have some writing here on the pistons. And yeah, that's a O32. So uh, these pistons are in the hole about 32,000. So I'm just gonna double check these two pistons I just put in now, make sure they're all about the same, but they're in there quite a bit. So I'm bringing up the TDC here. Right there and then just double check I'm gonna go ahead and put a flat edge or a straight edge over it and then get some feeler gauges in there and 
just to confirm it's the same size. All right, now we she got her over on her back side here. Gonna go ahead and torque all these bolts down. We're getting a nice ARP assembly lube on there so we can get the right torque spec. And uh, then after we do this, we're gonna get our side clearance measurement here. And it's gonna be pretty large because the guy who built this motor, Johnny, he, uh, he had a belt sander and he went ahead and narrowed them down quite a bit. And there's all kinds of clearance here. So they're definitely gonna be on the loose side, which I don't think is gonna be a big deal because we got a lot of bearing clearance, but I like to see them a little bit tighter than what they are, but I think we got about 30-ish thousands of side clearance. We'll see in a second. All right, so we're on to uh, round two here. The first set, we came to 45 thousandths of side clearance, which is a lot, but I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we're doing the uh, ARP lube on the, the bolts because these are ARP, I guess you call them studs, um, but they're just kind of like factory replacement bolts. And they call for a rod bolt stretch of, I don't know, like 60,000 or something like that. But I don't do the rod bolt stretch, I just do the torque method. So uh, if these were brand new, I'd go ahead and torque them in like a cycle of five or six times to kind of uh, pre-stretch them. And then the last set will be the, the final set. So these guys have already been used, uh, I don't know how many seasons, but they've been used in a motor before. So we're just gonna torque them one time to 55 foot pounds and call them good. Click. All right, number four of four is done. Just cleaning up all the ARP leftover assembly lube so we don't contaminate our new braking oil. We don't want any of that stuff floating around the oil. And that's it. I just gotta check this last one for side clearance. We're all pretty fat here. It's about 45,000, 40, 40, and we'll see. <laughs> Content. We're Family back. This actually Eric's playing with his hose over here. The question is, is this 100 foot new hose reel that I had to redo and get differently because the other one had half inch fittings and this is 3 eighths what we need. Is 100 feet going to fit this little reel? Yeah. Close. It's definitely getting a little tangled there, huh? Yeah, it's all twisted up. All right, well, he's going to be doing that for another six, seven hours. Um, <laughs> I got this, uh, or we got this oil pan cleaned up um, pretty good. So this thing is ready to go on the engine underneath that box. Um, it's supposed to rain this weekend again. So still hoping that we can get on the track this month, but only mother nature will tell. You cold over there? Yeah. It's not even that cold, it's like 60. No, you know when you're tired, you just end up being colder? No. Well, I know. I know when I'm hung over, I get colder. So she said that's a very large crankshaft. It's for a small block Chevy though. Not that big. Oh, and something else new is uh, I don't have a beer in my hand. I'm not drinking the entire month of April. It's kind of like a late Lent thing, but better late than never. And uh, I'm gonna do it 30 days, not 40 days. But I did it last year, it felt pretty good. So I'm gonna do it again. And uh, we have a lot of stuff from now until our, our wedding in May. To do so it's gonna help me kind of focus in and get all this stuff we got to get done yeah. easier so that's that i'm just gonna drink a bunch of water and i wish i had some sweet tea but i guess i gotta go to uh walmart and get some milos again all right doing a little dry fitting right now um obviously we're gonna put the gasket in me there um so it's not gonna sit like that but right now it's not hitting the pickup so I'm gonna check how far it is in the pan with this guy right here. All right, put this guy right on the pickup like that. Now we'll see where we're at as far as the depth. All right, now that it's on, there's a little gap there. I can go ahead and measure that distance and do the math and know what exactly it is with no gasket and then factor it in. I'm looking for about three eighths of an inch of a pickup to oil pan clearance. So we're pretty close, I think. Let me do the math real quick. 
All right, so gonna go ahead and uh, secure this down. You guys are probably wondering what the hell's going on here. This little piece is broken. This actually was in my motor before. This oil pump and a pickup. And what happened was it broke and it was flapping around because whoever built this motor originally never tackled it right here. So I'm gonna tackle it right here, but I'm gonna do one better and uh, rebuild this little bracket here and uh, weld a little piece in there to make it all work again. And that would be the first thing I'm gonna do with the oil pan. The second thing is this oil pan is set up for a uh, passenger side dipstick. This block is set up for a driver side dipstick. And so it's got no provision over here, which is fine because this oil pan has the dipstick, uh, actually on this side right here, that's not a dipstick, but it's a check plug. So that's your level right there. So you can check with that. But the problem is with this guy being on the left-hand side, it hangs over like this on this side of the block and it's an opening. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a little piece right here, cut it out, fit it right in there and weld it flat. So it's got a flat surface for the uh, gasket to sit on. And then on the other side, where it's actually like this on the block, you see it's got a little hole right here. The gasket does actually seal a little bit right there, but it's not enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill all this in right here with a little bit of RTV or Debbie Well. I haven't figured it out yet, but that's gonna make it seal up and not leak on us. All right, got the piece cut out. This is a little bit of extra right here. It's very hot. I don't know why the hell I'm touching it with my bare hands, but I can use that for the oil pump bracket or the pickup, I guess, bracket, we wanna call it. And this guy right here is also hot, but I believe it's just the right size. Yep, come right in here, I'll weld it up. I have a flat surface for the gasket to stick to. All right, let's see that we're gonna work or it's not. I'm gonna hold it like that right there, let her rip. All right, right there, don't move. there. Bud Light, no thanks. Alright, it's tacked. You gotta fill in the gap. I'm gonna turn this thing around. It's yeah, going pretty high here. Clean through that metal. All right, a little bit of grinding is necessary to get this guy nice and flat. Basically, it'll be the same thing as a, a planer, just as flat. All right, a little grinding. We got ourselves a surface. I'm taking my straight edge, AKA my file, and it's round the money. All right, HPC Eric here. Got our nice, almost brand new Philpro gasket cleaned up. Um, from our last build uh, So this guy's ready to go on and we just noticed something on the old pen that's kind of weird There is one flap down here this guy That was not moving. It was stuck And as you can see now we freed it up, but the reason was somebody took this little piece right here and they had flipped it over like that All right, so before I was so rudely interrupted by this GoPro battery dying um, You can see when I notched this out a little bit and when they notched it out, this guy was getting their way. So they folded it over and it bowed this uh, flap down here. And that's why I was getting held open. So, straighten it back out. And uh, this was up for a different motor because um, we, uh, we mocked it up here. And it's right here where they needed clearance. And obviously they're running a different kind of uh, oil pump or pickup tube where it came over long, uh, farther this way. Uh, we got plenty of clearance, so now that I folded back over, we're still probably a good, I don't know, half an inch away. So that's it. Uh, I booger welded this guy back up, and now we're going to go ahead and tack this real good right here. I have double insurance on this guy for never backing out.
Okay, pickup is welded on there. We uh, make shifted a nice big washer. Looks janky, but it's a no shit washer. So it's gonna work good. So we just got all the galley plugs in. Front, back, side, and all that. And uh, now I'm over here working on the uh, oil filter adapter. I always get rid of that stupid little springy deal in there uh, for the oil filter bypass. And I just tap and plug it. So that's what I'm doing right now. All right, I'm still gonna pull out all the parts and pieces here that we've had lying around for a long time now. Buckets of bolts and stuff. Uh, from the last time we tore this motor down, not this motor, but the one that blew up that we're using the parts off of. So we got a water pump, arm rock balancer, all kinds of stuff. But the oil pan is just kind of on for the time being um, with a couple bolts just holding it in because we still got to get obviously the front cover on, the cam in and all that stuff. But as you can see, that's a lot of overlap. If I didn't make that little plate in there, um, it would have been a leaker for sure. And some of you guys are probably thinking, why didn't you just buy the right oil pan to fit this block? Well, it's because we had this and it cost us nothing besides, you know, a little bit of time and TLC making this kind of stuff happen here. Um, so that's just the way we do it around here, bent but not broken, saving the money wherever we can. And this is a really good oil pan. This is a Moroso pan. I used to run this on the super stock over here. So it's going to be plenty good enough for a hobby stock that maybe does 55, 60 miles an hour. Um, and, uh, doesn't really have very much body flex or g-forces in the corner so it's a double uh, kick out pan and uh like i said we just kind of got to get the front cover on eric took it to work and he's going to clean it up real good um the cover that is and then we're going to go ahead and slap the cam in and get this thing going i got to order head gaskets and some head studs so that's going to be next on the list for us to do and uh work a little bit more on these cylinder heads here i gotta do some uh cleaning up on them Got to put in the right springs and uh, do a valve job on them, and then they should be ready to go. And uh, that will do it. So, so hopefully this thing will be uh, ready sometime this season to put in the car. And uh, I'm building the transmission as you guys saw earlier. That's coming together pretty nicely. So little by little. So I'm gonna end this video now because it's kind of getting a little ridiculous, and I haven't put a video out in a while to show you guys what's going on. So. Remember, if it's bent, it ain't broken. And we'll see you next time here on Trezzy and Racing, where we're going to be building this thing and hopefully maybe racing this car. So we'll see. Cross your fingers on that weather to hold out. No more rain.